Order, order. I would now like to make a statement. On the 20th of October, the Culture Media Sport Committee published a special report on answers given to it by the Right Honourable Member for Mid Bedfordshire when she was the Secretary of State for DCMS. The Honourable Member for Ockle South and Persia subsequently wrote to me asking for precedence for a complaint of a breach of privilege, as was his right. I declined to do so since the bar for such a complaint is high. The House should only take action when essential in order to provide reasonable protection for the House, its members or its officers from improper obstruction. I note the committee itself, of which the Honourable Gentleman is a member, has said, had Miss Dorish remained the Secretary of State, driving policy of selling the channel, we may have sought referral to the Privileged Committee. But as her claims have not been inhibited, the work of the committee, and she is no longer has a position of power over the future of Channel 4, we are instead publishing this report to enable the House and its members to draw its own conclusion. So I consider it appropriate to respect the committee's assessment of the situation. Correspondence on matters of privilege is private. Indeed, had to grow to great lengths to ensure that members can write to me in confidence on any matter, knowing their communication will remain private. Expect the same courtesy in my replies. The Honourable Member has seen fit to give a partial and biased account of my letter on Twitter, and I await his apology. I gave the Honourable Member notice that I would be raising this matter at this time. But I do stress, it is not the way we should be doing business in this House. Yeah. Honourable Member for Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, as, as you've the floor, yeah. Mr. Speaker, as, as you've just explained, the Commons Culture Committee in which I sit published a unanimous cross-party report about the testimony of the Right Honourable Member uh, and the testimony she gave to the committee. And there are now considerable public interest in what should happen next. I want to put on record, Mr Speaker, that I deplore social media pylons against you or indeed anyone else. I've been on the receiving end of them and they're exceedingly, they are exceedingly unpleasant. But could I ask for guidance on what I and other members should tell their constituents about integrity in politics in this context? If someone misleads the committee, what should happen next? Can, can I just say, integrity is that, first of all, the Clinton letter, but only half the letter, is not integrity. In fact, far from it. It misled the people of this country. It certainly put me in bad light with the people of this country. And I do not expect that to happen in an impartial speaker. So if that was an apology, I do not think it was very good. Yeah. David Davis. Mr. Mr Speaker, in following on from that, honourable members of this House have certain strict duties on them. First, there is a duty of upholding the institutions of this House. Clearly, in breaching the confidentiality of the Speaker's private correspondence, the member for Ockel and South, uh, South Persia uh, has broken, knowingly broken that rule. And frankly for that, what, if that was an apology, that was not sufficient for that alone. But we also have a duty to tell the truth. Mm. Now, in his public pronouncements, he implicitly criticised you, Mr Speaker, for not referring the DCMS Secretary of State to the Privileges Committee. But you were simply following the convention yes. of agreeing with the DCMS Select Committee, of which he is a member. And when yeah. they decided not to refer, there was no minority report from him. Mm. There was not even a vote against from ah, him. Yeah. It was a unanimous vote. So what he was trying to do, Mr Speaker, was to blame you by his partial release of his letter, and he was leading the public to believe that somehow you made this decision against the wishes of the committee. The rules of this House do not allow me to assert whether I view the misleading of the public as deliberate. So the House can make its own judgment on that. But this miserable half-apology was completely inadequate for the breach of this measure. I'm going to leave it there for today, and I hope the Honourable will consider the way he's put his own part.